Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a review of The Prestige by Christopher Priest and I'll also be comparing the movie as well. This edition is the SF Masterworks which is published by Gallant, one of the Yellow Spines. It was originally published in 1995 and the genre is classified as science fiction although I think it's only very light science fiction really. It's more general fiction to my mind in most cases with just a slight science fiction edge to it, frankly. The story starts off in 1878. There are two magicians and over one particular uh, magic show they clash over a particular magic trick that one of them basically doubts the other's ability. This then creates friction between the two. They start to slightly interfere with each other's magic shows on and off for a while. And frankly this then leads to a massive rivalry which lasts both of their lives and indeed is the focus and emphasis of the whole book and frankly it's remarkable the way that this rivalry is displayed of which I'll go into in a second. They both spend years trying to outdo and show up the other and in particular it's over one trick that they both have which is extremely similar called the transported man, although they both have their own names for it. And this trick is basically where they will go into a sort of box, like a big magic cabinet, shut the door and then they'll appear somewhere else, either on stage or in the audience. And neither of them likes the fact that the other has a similar trick because both of them do not understand how the other can be performing it because they both know that their way is unique to them and that the other one is not performing it in the same way and they can't figure out how the other is performing it and basically this greatly annoys both of them and they both go to remarkable lengths to try and figure out how this trick is performed by the other and why they're performing it in this way and the intricacies of it, intricacies of it and frankly it's remarkably well written and frankly fascinating all the way through the cost to both of them though to try and learn this magic uh, trick though is pretty extreme. It takes a massive toll on them of course because it, you know it's a lifelong thing both physically and mentally and that is where this book shines because this is not just about and it is not the the primary point is not just them being magicians and illusionists and trying to sort of outdo the other. This is an exploration uh, of the psychological mind of both men and in particular the obsessive minds of these two men because they are both obsessive on their magic and, and indeed they are obsessive on the other so you've got one obsessive person being obsessed by somebody who is also obsessive so it's obsessing on obsession this is done in a really unusual and really remarkable way which I've read books which have tried to explore obsession before but frankly not like this because the way this is done and obviously with the setting as well is frankly remarkable. As you might have guessed this is a really dark book. You think you know what to expect from it and indeed how dark it will be and such because of the setting. This is uh, Victorian England which obviously has been featured in other books and other TV series before, of course, you know, like Charles Dickens obviously featured Victorian England as being harsh and very dark and grim. This is something very different, and frankly, this goes far deeper than just that standard harsh Victorian England in a really unusual way. But it's still familiar, but it has something different and it has an edge to it, which frankly makes this book stand out amongst pretty much everything. I mean, this book was obviously made into a film, of which I'll talk about in a second, for good reason because it's a remarkable book and the film, which I watched before the book by the way, I watched the film when it was actually out on cinema 10 years ago, uh, the book I've only just recently read and they're both brilliant in their own ways, of which I'll now go into. The movie was released in 2006, it was directed by Christopher Nolan of Batman and Inception fame. And it stars Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman as the two illusionists. Oh, and the two illusionists' name, which I forgot to say, actually, 
are Alfred Borden and Rupert Angier. I should have said that at the start. So, book versus film. The film is very different, although it still is equally brilliant. I mean, obviously, I watched the film first, so I loved the film, and that's made me want to read the book, of which I also now love. The darkness of the film is different from the book, because in the book, you, I thought I knew what to expect and how dark it would get, and indeed the plot line. And indeed, you do get the main plot, and indeed, the main twists are still essentially the same, but it's done in a very different way, and the feel of it is different, which is remarkable because it's, it's kind of not different in some ways, because it's still dark for the same reasons. It, their obsession is still as intense, and it's still as heavily psychological, but the film is obviously a visual and audio um, medium. The book is a mental one. And this difference makes them both stand out in their own ways. And it makes them both extraordinarily powerful, both in their own ways. And frankly, I can't say that one is better than the other. Often, people will say the film is better than the book or the book is better than the film. Not really. Both of them are brilliant in their own way, truly brilliant, and I would recommend reading and watching both. The perspective as well that you look at this world from is of course drastically different. In the book, the perspective changes between the both points of view uh, character and indeed between other points of view, of which I'm not going to say because it will give away spoilers and such, but it, it changes, and also the way it's written changes as well, it evolves over time and they both think in different ways. The film has a particular focus, it only focuses on these two men and their points of view only, which is still good, I'm not saying it's worse because it's got less points of view, it's just different and it certainly makes it in a way more intense because the focus is so much on one man or the other and that there's no in between points which there is in the book which gives the book a certain unknown factor. The film doesn't want that unknown factor. It needs to be more precise, let's say, and it needs to be more well-known. So it has two points of view, which are quite fixed, relatively speaking, and the focus is extremely good and extremely well done. I thought the film was actually much darker than the book until about halfway through the book, when things start turning in ways that I didn't expect, because of course the book is very different from the film in some respects. I mean, the, the overall plot, as I've said, is similar, but the way the plot is done and the intricacies of it and the little nuances are drastically different. And also the emotional state of the characters is gone into in a rather more, well not more detailed because it's detailed in the film, but it's different though in the book because you get different points of view on their obsession and on their emotional states. So when they're upset, you get their sense of dismay from their point of view, but also from several others. And this builds up the characters probably more than the film in some ways, but the film's just as good. The film is very much like the book in terms of it being a study of the psychological aspect of obsession and what obsession can lead you to not just in a obvious sort of you know the outer mind and what people perceive you as if you're obsessive but this is a true sort of inner mind and kind of a, the spirit of somebody and how that can change and alter over the lifetime of somebody who is obsessed with one or two very important at least to them things this is the same in both book and film, it's just displayed and talked about in different ways. And frankly, that difference makes it more powerful because it sort of helps both film and book, although obviously it depends on which you view first, whether it's a book or film. One thing that somebody might ask is which should you do first? Should you watch the film first or should you read the book first? And actually this is a really difficult question because I personally watched the film first almost 10 years ago and I've only just 
read the book, so there's 10 years difference in it. I would actually would say though, not, not just because that, that was why I did it, I would actually suggest that method. I would say film first, then book, because the film does it in a more visual way, and it, make, and it sets up your expectations really high, and in a very particular way, and then when you read the book, it's, it, I mean, it lives up to it, I mean, it's still phenomenal, but it lives up to it in a different way, and I was expecting certain things to happen, and then they did, but the reasons for them happening was different, and I was actually really, really surprised by the way, the re you know, the reasoning behind the actions, and indeed how the darkness changes. So overall, this is a fantastic book, focusing on the psychological development and intricacies of obsession between two men. I would recommend this book to pretty much everybody, whether you like science fiction or not, because frankly, science fiction is only extremely light, it's more general fiction, frankly. And it, the writing is amazing, the subtlety and the intricacies of the writing are frankly remarkable, and this will be one of my favourite books of this year, without doubt. I mean, the film was one of my favourite films I watched of that year when it was originally released. So uh, this is a frankly phenomenal book, it really is. So with that said, that is it for this review. If you've read this or indeed watched the film or done both and would like to talk about it, then please leave a comment and we can have a discussion or you can comment on somebody else's comment and you know there can be discussions going on down below. All my social media links can be found in the description box below as they always are. And with that said, that is it for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.